Reggae Just Extra with Ross Dennis. If you were to create a timeline of important moments in Jamaican music, you might notice a tendency for one Leroy Wallace, aka Horsemouth, to be somehow involved. I and I do don't deal with violence. I and I is peaceful, Rasta man. I don't steal, cheat, and see it. I man serve. It's the last thing I continually, no matter what the week I say. And I know that I and I is like a tree that planted by the river of water. And not even the dog that piss against the wall of Babylon shall escape this judgment. For I and I know that, I and I know that all of you shall witness the day that Babylon shall fall. Drummer, actor, pioneering DJ, activist, a Rastaman with a long countenance and expressive eyes has seen and done it all. My name is Ras Dennis and I welcome you to another video by Reggae Just Extra. This episode is all about Horsemouth. You might be wondering on how he got that name. Well, stay tuned to find out. You're now watching Reggae Just Extra with Ras Dennis. If you're watching this channel for the very first time, Please consider clicking on the subscription button below, like, and hit the notification bell to keep you updated on our latest video. Leroy Horsemouth Wallace was born on August 22, 1950. He is a Jamaican drummer who worked for several years at Studio One and has worked with numerous reggae artists including the Gladiators, Inner Circle, Prince Farai, Sound Dimension, Gregory Isaacs, Burning Spear, Ijaman Livy, Bruno Blum, and Pierplejack. He starred as himself in the lead role of the film Rockers. As a child, he attended the fabled Alpha School for Wayward Boys, whose music department produced Don Drummond, Rico Rodriguez, Yellow Man, and Leroy Smart. In the late 60s, he scored the hot seat as house drummer at Clement Coxon Dodd's Introduction Superfluous Studio One Records. By the mid-70s, he was beating out pugnacious patterns at Studio One's successor in Island Dominance Channel One, though there is some historical debate concerning whether it was he or Sly Dunbar who created the rocker's style that defined the times. Then, of course, he became famous internationally as the irrepressible, charismatic star of Ted Baffalucco's feature film, Rockers. But let's not forget that he was already a recording artist in his own right, on several notable DJ 45s, the most celebrated being 1975's Herb Vendor, recorded at Lee Scratch Perry's Black Ark. Despite wandering into the crosshairs of history so often, none of these achievements have brought Horsemouth lasting financial reward. Yes, a lot of people owe me. A lot of record company. It's true the one. I don't get no pay. Rockers, I don't get no pay. I, I play for like, I think I play 80% of Jamaican music from all the time. 80% of so all those artists from way back in the 60s, 70s. 80s, 90s, that was 2000. I, I placed I, for almost everybody. And they just don't give me no royalty, no publishing, no nothing. You see, I, I understand. People say, oh, it's more than your fault. Oh, you know, get, this head never get that. Speaking on Allow, he became a drummer. Horsemouth said, drumming is something you have in your head, and music is in your heart. The only thing you really need is some time to bring it to fulfillment on an instrument. One of the first things he did as a drummer was playing with Burning Spear when they were still a trio. They had just returned from St. Anne's Bay to meet Jack Ruby for an audition. After Ruby introduced the band, he played the Joe Frazier rhythm. It automatically became King Tubby's signature tune. Before that, Horsemouth used to play drums for his grandmother who was into Pacamania, a Jamaican folk religion combining revivalism with ancestor worship and spirit possession. Pacamania contained a lot of African elements which were brought to Jamaica by the first slaves. His parents couldn't afford to give him a decent education, so he ended up at the Alpha Boys School, a school for wayward boys where he was taught music. Apart from music, they also taught him printing and toil making. As a matter of fact, the first job he held after he left Alpha Boys was at the government printing office, printing passports and other official documents. In those days, he also had the idea to start his own newspaper, following the example set by Marcus Garvey. 
In 1976, Horsemouth was featured in a movie titled Rockers, along with Burning Spear. According to him, they met Ted Baffalucos, the director of the movie, at Madison Square Garden's concert in New York City, who was making plans to travel to Jamaica for the said movie. He was still looking for people to be in it. So, Horsemouth wanted to impress him, he told Ted Baffalucos that he had already done two movies. At first, Ted was just planning to do a documentary, not a movie per se. His whole budget was only about 500,000 US dollars and of course, he went to Bob Marley and Peter Tosh first, but they were asking way too much money, so in the end they paid 50,000 US dollars to Bunny Whaler to do the theme song and Horsemouth doing the lead for $30,000. The whole movie was shot in Horsemouth's yard except the scene where Burning Spear was singing John No Dead on the beach, which was shot in St. Anne's Bay on the location where the prison used to be, where Marcus Garvey got locked up. Several popular reggae artists star in the movie, including Leroy Horsemouth Wallace, Burning Spear, Gregory Isaacs, Big Youth, Dillinger, Robbie Shakespeare, and Jacob Miller. The film features authentic culture, characters, and mannerisms. The main rocker, Leroy Horsemouth Wallace, for example, is shown living with his actual wife and kids and in his own home. The recording studios shown are the famous Harry J Studios where many Roots reggae artists recorded during the 1970s including Bob Marley. The film includes Kittis I recording of Graduation and Zion at the studio, which he happened to be recording when Baffalucos visited. In 2018, Wallace, Kittis I, and Big Youth came together to perform two shows in Sao Paulo, Brazil, to commemorate the 40th anniversary of the film. Now, how Leroy Wallace got the name Horsemouth. Back then, Horsemouth had a sister who was raised in England. When she returned to Jamaica, she got an infection due to climate change. One day, he was making fun of his sister because of that, telling her things like look at your spotted legs, and so on, and she got very angry and shouted you really got a horse mouth on you. For the remainder of that day, both kept on insulting each other, throwing spotted legs and horse mouth back and forth. Later on, he told his friends on the corner the story and they immediately started laughing at the horse mouth thing. From that time, they started calling him horse mouth. At first, horse mouth didn't like it at all. As a matter of fact, he used to carry a rock in his pocket, which he used to throw at whoever dared calling him by that name. But after he starred in Rockers, he started thinking it wouldn't be a bad name for a movie star. So when they wanted to introduce him to the press as Mr. Wallace, he said, no, call me Horsemouth. And that's how it's been ever since. Thank you for watching this episode and do leave your thoughts in the comment section down below. And I'll see you again very soon for another video. However, until we meet again, please subscribe, like, and hit the notification bell to keep you updated on our latest video. Much effort is made to ensure all materials and reggae gist extras videos fall within the guidelines of fair use. No copyright infringement is intended. If you are or represent the copyright owner of any materials accidentally used in this video and have an issue with its use, please contact me, Ras Dennis, and I will respond as soon as possible. Many thanks for watching Reggae Gist Extra with Ras Dennis. Reggae Gist, Facts and Culture.